So welcome to the Sourdough Series Part 1, Starting the Starter. Let's back up a little bit and talk about what is sourdough. Let's back up even more and talk about what is bread. All right, let's look at a random uh, whole wheat bread nutrition label and see what is in a commercial loaf bread. Uh, whole wheat flour, water, bulgur wheat, sugar, wheat gluten, honey, soybean oil, yeast, whole wheat salt, preservatives, calcium propaninate, sorbic acid, monoglycerides, grain vinegar, datum, calcium sulfate, soy lecithin, and natural flavors. Basically flour, water, salt, commercial yeast, preservatives, flavorings, who knows what else. The whole idea of using commercial yeast, it's fast rising yeast, it's made so that it can be mixed, proofed, and baked in a matter of hours in a factory, stuffed in a bag, and put on a supermarket shelf where it will sit and stay fresh for, you know, seven days, basically. Sourdough bread is very different than that. Sourdough bread is made with three ingredients, flour, water, and salt. The part of sourdough that is magic is the yeast, and it's not commercial yeast. There's none of, there's none of this in sourdough. So this, this is baker's yeast. This is the commercial yeast that you buy in the market. You can make a loaf of bread or some dinner rolls or anything like that at home. It's very convenient. It works. It, it's, it's not sourdough. Sourdough is a, a naturally occurring leavener a yeast that is found in the air, in the environment. It's cultivated in flour, uh, and then it is kept as a starter. It is kept as a, as a little pet in a jar like this. And that is going to be the thing that you use to leaven your bread, to make the bread rise. I'm not gonna get into the chemistry and the biology of sourdough, because that's something you can read about all over the internet. I'm gonna talk about what you need to do to get into sourdough baking. So I got my first starter ever about 10 years ago. Uh, it was given to me by someone that taught me how to make sourdough bread. Um, and I kept it alive for about seven years. I made a lot of bread with it and uh, I let it lapse. The starter died and I was without starter. So I went uh, looking for a new starter and I didn't have anyone around that could offer me starter. So I started searching online and I found many sources online of places to get starter delivered to your door. You do have to take care of them once they arrive, but they are available for purchase uh, very easily. And I'm going to show you those right now. So these are the starters that we're going to be working with in this video series. Now, before anyone starts yelling at me that I'm not starting my starter from actual scratch, I just want to say that it is a possible to take a bucket, put flour in the bucket, add some water, put it on your countertop, and uh, just sit around and wait. And in about a week or so, that will start to bubble. You add some more flour, it will bubble, and then pretty soon you're going to have a starter. I have actually done that, and I've never had any luck with it. it it's, it's hit or miss, and it is so easy to go online, place an order, and have cultures arrive at your door that you can just start. That is what I'm going to do. So what we have here are two different kinds of starters. These here came from a company called sourdough.com. I have never used these before, but on this website, there are about 15 different starters from all over the world that you can order they come to your door and you can try sourdough from all over the world. We have France, San Francisco, Ischia, Italian starter, Finland starter, and a uh, Camaldoli Italian starter. So Italy, France, Finland, San Francisco. This here is a different kind of starter that is shipped to your door. This starter here comes from King Arthur Flour. This is a live starter. This is a actual live starter. Uh, show you how this comes. You order this online. Ta-da! 
check this out. There it is. Live sourdough. Smells awesome. The reason I really love this starter is it actually comes from King Arthur Flower, which is located about an hour north of here. Uh, and it is descended from a starter that's been nurtured in New England since the 1700s. This is actually a local starter for me. So I like this starter because it, it came from an hour away and it came from the 1700s, which is where this, this house came from that we're standing in. Uh, this house was built in the 1700s and we are in New England. So this starter makes a lot of sense to me. Now to feed your starter, you're going to need flour. I am not sponsored by this company, but I highly endorse this company. This is an employee owned company. They're about an hour away from where I live and uh, they've been around since 1790 and they make a fantastic product. Uh, this is unbleached all purpose flour. That's what you want to go for. It doesn't have to be King Arthur, but go for an all purpose unbleached flour if you can find it. So the King Arthur flour starter is like my control starter. It's tried and true. I've used this for a long time. Uh, I just got a brand new one because I wanted to have a box to open up on camera, but also I wanted to freshen up what I had. So I'm going to start with a fresh version of the King Arthur starter. Uh, and like I said, I've used this before. I know, I know what it can do. So these starters from sourdough.com, which I am not affiliated with at all. Uh, I just, I was curious. I found them online and he had starters from all over the world. And I thought, you know, these are probably all going to taste different and act different. I'll do them. You can see how they respond and maybe you can pick the one that works the best. But uh, these are dormant and I've never used these before. So this is all gonna be my first time with these starters. So something you wanna keep in mind when you are using starter and when you are mixing starter, you want to have clean hands and clean containers. You can contaminate this yeast with natural yeast and junk on your hands and you can kill your starter very easily uh, by touching it with dirty hands, um, leaving it uncovered, things like that. So you want to clean your hands and clean your containers before you get started with starter. You want to mix your starter in a non-reactive container. So I prefer plastic just because it's easier to handle, easier to clean when you drop it. It doesn't break. It's got a very nice lid that goes on top. I like to be able to watch the starter from the side to see how it's rising. And these cost about two or three dollars a piece and they last forever. They're polycarbonate, one quart uh, food service containers. You can also use glass, which is great. You can use a ceramic bowl. You just want something non-reactive. So nothing metal. Uh, I wouldn't use anything porous, uh, like stone, you know, terracotta, I don't, I don't know. But definitely something non-porous and non-reactive. Sanitized, clean container, clean utensil, clean hands, fresh starter, unbleached flour, all-purpose flour. So there's your starter right there. It just is sort of the consistency of like a, a, a thick pancake batter, uh, a very wet dough. It's got a, a very yeasty, fresh, fermenting smell to it, and that's all it is. Take our clean container, add about that much flour, and we're going to put in our starter. That's it. Boom, that's the yeast. And then I'm gonna use this container and I'm gonna put water in here and mix it in. 
So I'm just using the water to kind of clean the container here. You don't want to touch the starter because you don't want to get anything from your hands, any yeast or any wild bacteria that's on your hands. You don't want to get it in there. Then we just mix it up. And that is it. This is gonna be the consistency of kind of like a pancake batter. So it's thick, it's not runny, uh, but it's going to uh, it's going to start to activate really fast. So this is the King Arthur flour starter, and I mixed this about five minutes ago. And you can see there's already bubbles forming. There's already activity in there. Uh, and if you get a starter from a friend or you you get a live starter from the mail, uh, you mix it up. It, you should start to see activity very fast in that starter. Now let's mix up the dormant starters. So it's gonna be the very same process. We're gonna put all these into each one of their labeled containers. And I'm gonna add about 100 grams or three quarters of a cup of flour to each one and then the same amount of water, mix them all up. I'm just using tap water. Our water comes from a well, so there is no chlorine or anything in here. Uh, you definitely want to use non-chlorinated water if you can. There are going to be active bacteria in here and you don't want to kill anything, so as pure water as you can get. Again, we're going for a thick pancake batter. You don't want it to, to be dough. You want it to be kind of like a, not soupy, but um, there you go. That's what you want right there. Oatmeal, kind of like a, a thick oatmeal. Put a lid on that so we don't cross contaminate. I'm gonna wash the spoon for the next one. With starter, it's not so much an exact measuring, it's more of a feel. Uh, again, once you do this a few times, you're gonna to start to feel kinda of what you're going for here. This is, that's just about right. All right, so we have started our starters. Uh, I'm very excited. I've always wanted to try San Francisco's sourdough starter. So this is very exciting. Uh, I've also got two new Italian starters, which I've always wanted to try, a French starter. I never knew there was a Finland starter, but uh, we're, we're gonna try all these out in this series. So next step with the starter, these are gonna sit now. Probably gonna sit, you're gonna put them in a relatively warm place. Not hot place, you don't wanna put them in the fridge, you wanna put them at a room temperature to warm-ish, sort of near a heater, but not on a heater. Uh, you want these to be a little warmer than room temperature, basically, for 24 hours. Uh, these are gonna start bubbling and growing, and they're gonna, they're gonna rise up and you're gonna see bubbles and this thing's gonna expand. 
and then it's going to start going down. As it's going down, that means it's, it's used up all the food. The yeast in there has used up all the fresh flour that we just gave them. Once that goes up and then starts to come down again... Okay, this is just a quick update. It has been about 36 hours since I mixed up the, uh, the starter. And you can see here there's a little bit of liquid on top of the starter, which is totally normal. And the starter has gone, it has bubbled up and it has now kind of gotten, gotten flat. So what I'm going to do is add about half a cup of flour, which is about, oh, 50 grams of flour. And I'm just going to stir that in. I'm just feeding the starter after about a day and a half. I'm not going to take away from what was in there because there's a lot of yeast in there now. But I'm just going to, I'm just feeding it with half a cup. And probably in about 12 to 24 hours, I'm going to start taking half of this out and then adding another full cup in and try and uh, get this all primed up. But that's it. I'm just adding half a cup of flour to the mix. And uh, I'm going to put the lid on and put it back in a relatively warm spot. And that's it. Feed the starter. The yeast in here is going to consume the flour and it's going to grow. It's going to get bigger. And that's going to poof up. And once it, start, once it gets to its peak, it's then going to start to sink down. When that goes up and then starts to sink again, we're going to take about two-thirds of this flour out of the container and then we're going to feed it with fresh flour. We're going to do that two or three times over the next five to seven days. We're going to watch these grow, we're going to remove some of what's in there, and we're going to put fresh flour in, feed it, watch it grow again. Pretty soon you're going to be able to feed this starter in, at room temperature in about an hour or two. It's going to be filling up the container. That's when you know your, your starter is primed and ready for bread. So stay tuned. This is going to be the end of this video. And once this starter has become primed and ready to go, we're going to have the next video where we're going to mix the dough. That's the fun part. So this is your homework assignment. Go out and get some starter. Order whatever looks good online to you. Get some fresh flour. Get a container. Put it in the container. Mix it up. And I'll see you back here in about five, six, seven days. And we will get on to the next phase of mixing the dough, proofing the dough, and baking some bread. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.